Hello Flat Earth researchers, debaters and debunkers. I'm putting this video up ahead of the much anticipated uh, Flat Earth test that's going to be performed by Red Pill World and he seems to be a well-qualified surveyor of sorts and uh, he's got the equipment, skills, knowledge, experience to go out to a hilltop in the US and measure the angles and distances to other hilltops in the area and uh, so we're all a lot of people looking forward to these tests. Um, so I was kind of uh, I asked him a few questions about how he's going to do it, and uh, I was quite surprised at one of the responses that I got. So I'd just like to take you through what I think is uh, going to be done in the experiment, and uh, how that could be flawed or we could get some kind of false results. Uh, I'm not a mathematician, I'm not a surveyor, I'm not an engineer, I've got very limited knowledge of uh, these kind of things, but I've been thinking about the whole horizon thing, as you've seen maybe in my previous videos, I've really been looking into whether we can actually see evidence of a curve. And uh, so far, uh, there doesn't seem to be any. We, we get objects disappearing in the distance, um, but they follow the whole perspective thing where they disappear because they've gone beyond our vision and they disappear from the bottom up going into the distance. Uh, so we, we, we don't really see things going over a curve. We assume they do, and, uh, but uh, as far as I can tell, uh, we never actually see that happen. Okay, because objects get smaller and smaller as they get further away and eventually they disappear from our view um, usually because they're so small or they just get so far away that they get kind of into the mixed up into the horizon anyway so uh, this guy's going to go out there and check the angles and compare them to a flat plane scenario a flat earth scenario and a, a curved earth scenario so here we go let's have a look at how, how the figures, figures are going to possibly pan out so here we have um, the usual thing where we've got the viewpoint on the left and he's going to be measuring uh, the angle to mountain a and mountain b so let's assume in this we've got uh, mountain A is 6 kilometers away and Mountain B is 12 kilometers away and they are both the same height. So based on that, uh, the extra distance uh, creates a less of an angle from the viewer to, to get to that high point. So, you know, the heights are known, the distances are known and the angles can be pretty much um, estimated from that. Okay, so that kind of seems to make sense. That's uh, pretty standard stuff. So in the calculations we have uh, height which is known, the distance which is known, the angles are to be turned as they say in uh, the trade apparently. So then we would go to compare that with a curved earth scenario. I'm trying to get the word curved in there, okay. And uh, so of course what we've got is the same thing, mountain A, mountain B, same heights, 3,000 meters, same distance, okay I've, I've obviously approximated this all right, um, six kilometers and 12 kilometers. So, uh, but in this one, we've got the calculations including the height, the distance, the angles, and the assumed curvature of the Earth. So what happens when you get the curvature is that you get a greater angle between A and B than you would do in the first flat plane scenario. So okay here we've got a relatively small angle um, difference between A and B. Okay so that would indicate that we're on a flat plane. And uh, then here we've got a greater angle between A and B so that would indicate uh, that we're on a curved plane. Of course we've also so got the assumption that we're on a kind of ball or um, oblate spheroid as it were so there is some room for error there okay the guy's quite upfront about it he's expecting a lot of um, <laughs> debate over the results that he gives but that's the scenario okay that's what he's doing he's basically turning the angles uh, several times a dozen times uh, each to kind of uh, check them I suppose uh, reset uh, his equipment he said and so he's really aiming to be quite accurate or as accurate as possible with some very good equipment okay so that's the difference we've got uh, the flat plane scenario on a uh, there you go it's flat and then we've got the curved uh, earth scenario so uh, you know depending on the angles that they get for the different points we should be able to see whether we're on a flat or curved plane right okay now i, I asked the guy 
some questions. And as I said, um, I was surprised at one of the answers I got. So we know that objects appear to get smaller as they get further away, right? Okay, so let's let's just look at this on a, a kind of a kind of 3D with this kind of perspective angle on it. Okay, so um, you know again we're measuring the the angles from the uh, from the viewpoint here to point A and point B. Now in this scenario again same thing, six kilometers and twelve kilometers away. Both of the peaks are three thousand uh, meters high. Okay. So, um, fine, okay, we get a similar kind of thing here to over here, the flat plane. We've got, we've got those different angles, you can just kind of see them taking place there. So, now, thing is though, check this out. What we have is um, the knowledge that objects appear smaller as they get further away. Now, I asked the gentleman if this aspect will be factored into the equations. And he said, no, they won't. All he's doing is looking at the difference between the angles on a flat plane and a curved plane. Okay, all right. But what he's not going to do is compensate for the apparent reduced height of the peaks in the greater distance. Okay, you see what's happening? We've got point A, peak A, and peak B. Okay, now in a, in a 2D world, we, we, we keep them 3,000 meters high. Okay, but when we're looking from here, the viewpoint, we're going to have to angle down to be able to reach the peak at the apparent height that it has become because it's smaller with the distance. And that's unknown. There isn't an equation for this. There isn't an equation really for the difference in an angle of your line of sight to an object that is much smaller in appearance because it's much further away. There is no calculation for that. There is no real calculation for how much the, si the apparent size of an object decreases with distance. You, it can't really be truly measured, okay? So if we get onto the, the, the back to the kind of 2D model here, maybe we can see that, the difference in the angles that we're going to get, yeah? So we've got um, the viewpoint here again, viewing point A and, and point B, uh, just, just like the flat plane scenario, okay? We're keeping those at the same height, no problem, okay? But from this guy's perspective, he's going to have to angle right down to compensate so he, you know, the, the apparent height of this 3,000 meter peak from his viewpoint, okay? So what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen is that. Yeah? We get a greater angle when we assume there's a curve. A greater angle than when we're on a flat plane. But he's not going to look at it like this. not taking into account the, the, the height difference or the apparent height difference, yeah? So we're stuck. We're stuck. 
with we're going to be stuck with results that indicate a curve when the difference in size <laughs> because of the distance of that object creates a completely different angle a lower angle yeah curvature versus apparent height based on your perspective they are both well curvature is assumed apparent height is unknown okay do you get it do you get it yeah <laughs> turn out curved.